I'm Dan Miner. I'm a professor in the Cardiovascular Research Institute at the University of California, San Francisco, where my laboratory studies ion channels. Ion channels are the molecules that make the bioelectrical signals that drive our thoughts, moods, actions, and heartbeats. My laboratory uses a combination of structural biology, electrophysiology, and chemical biology methods to understand how channels work and to develop new means to control their functions. I'm here today with two postdoctoral fellows from my laboratory, Dr. Aaron Chang and Dr. Fayal Abdurrahman Ali, to describe our recent work published in Neuron regarding the structure and functional mechanisms by which an important class of ion channels, known as KV7 channels, work. There are more than 300 different types of ion channels in the human nervous system. Our study focuses on a subclass called KV7, or KCNQ, voltage-gated potassium channels. These channels are particularly important for controlling excitability in our hearts and in our brains. And there are many human mutations that have been discovered in KCNQ channels that cause problems such as arrhythmia, epilepsy, and deafness. There are five subtypes of KCNQ channels. KV7.1 is predominantly found in the heart, where it makes the IKS current. KV7.2 to 7.5 are predominantly found in the brain, where they make something called the M current. We can think of these, for the purpose of our discussion here, as neuronal and cardiac channels. KV7 channels share a common architecture with other voltage-gated ion channels, in which there's a transmembrane domain that controls, that has the voltage sensor domain, and that has a pore domain. These are followed by a very large intracellular domain comprised of four parts called the A, B, C, and D regions. The D region forms a canonical coil-coil structure that helps pull four subunits together to make a functional ion channel. The A and B domains provide an important landing site for a key auxiliary subunit for these channels called calmodulin. Our studies start here with a focus on understanding the structures and structural transitions that occur between the apocalmodulin state and the calcium calmodulin state in the context of the full ion channel, shown here. To understand how calcium drive change in chem affects to KV7 and chem interaction, we determine the structure of apochem that does not have calcium ion and KV7.4 AB domain complex using X-ray crystallography. We found that apochem forms a clamp formation that embraces KV7.4 A and B helices. In this clamp structure, apochem C lobe bounds to A helix and apochem N lobe bounds to B helix. This is different from our previously reported calcium chem and KV7.4 complex structure, which is both chem C lobe and N lobe bounds to a single B helix, which represents much more canonical chem binding mode. So now let's compare the detail that how individual lobe interact with channel in apochem clamp versus the calcium chem binding mode. APO C lobe bounds to its IQ segment in A helix using semi-open conformation. Remarkably, this interaction is identical to that was seen in other structurally characterized APOCHEM and IQ segment interaction, such as CHEM and myosin 5 complex structure. By contrast, APOCHEM lobe bounds to a B helix using open conformation. By comparing this APOCHEM to calcium bind structure, we can see the consequence of the calcium binding. In case of C lobe, it caused a conformation change from semi-open to open conformation, and it caused the C lobe release from A helix and allow it bounds to B helix. By contrast, A po N lobe and calcium N lobe bounds with B helix with same open conformation, and the only structural difference between these two forms are localized in calcium ligand binding region that is called EFN. However, uh, in using the biochemical experiment using titration calorimetry, we found that there are substantial affinity difference between these two forms. That calcium bound form binds to titrate to B helix than A4 form. Hence, there are two separate consequences of the calcium binding. For C lobe, it caused a conformation change from semi open to open conformation, while in case of N lobe, Calcium binding increased the binding affinity and effectively nailing this lobe in its places. 
This movie summarizes our structural observation by showing our mob starting from apoc clamp to calcium cam binding mode and demonstrate the extent of change between two conformations. You can see that cam C lob switch from A to B helix while cam N lob stay in the B helix with identical conformation. Next, we sought to test the functional correlate of our structural observations to see whether they make sense. Using human epithelium kidney cells as expression model, we co-expressed KV7.4 with either CAM1 type, CAM12 in which the N lobe was disabled for calcium binding, CAM34 in which the C lobe was disabled for calcium binding, or CAM1234 in which both lobes were disabled. We then measured biophysical changes in the channel activity using patch clamp electrophysiology. Comparison of the effect of CAM wild type versus CAM1234, the APOCAM mimic in which both lobes were disabled for calcium binding, showed that APOCAM facilitates KV7.4 activation. The effect of APOCAM were perfectly phenocopied by the CAM C lobe mutant CAM34, but not CAM12. Together with our structural observations, these data indicate two things. One, that APOCAM serves to facilitate KV7.4 activation, and two, that C lobe acts as a calcium, calcium dependent switch. Pushing more our investigation, we found out that the facilitation role of APOCAM is shared by all neuronal KV7 isoforms. Now, there is a number of reported differences in how CAM is thought to regulate the cardiac KV7.1 isoform versus the neuronal isoforms. As structural studies have shown, the clamp conformation in a CAM KV7.1 complex we wanted to test how APOCAM affected KV7.1. We found that opposite to KV7.4, APOCAM inhibited rather than facilitated KV7.1 activation. The other interesting finding is that the effects of APOCAM in KV7.1 were perfectly phenocopied by the CAM C lobe mutant CAM34. Together with other data present in our publication, this data suggests that KV7 channels use the same APOCAM clamp and C lobe calcium dependent switch to cause opposite functional outcomes in the cardiac KV7.1 versus the neuronal. KV7.2 to 7.5 isoforms of this voltage-dependent potassium channel class. Our studies provide a unified framework for addressing how modulatory factors control KV7 function. This opens up new directions for important questions, such as how lipid modulation happens, how phosphorylation works, and importantly, how disease mutations affect KV7 function and cause problems such as epilepsy and arrhythmias. All of the work described in our paper was done at the UCSF Cardiovascular Research Institute and at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratories. It's been supported generously by the American taxpayer through funds provided through the National Institutes of Health, through the National Institute for Deafness and Communication Disorders, the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, and the French Fondation pour la Vocation. <laughs>